My name is Quentin Oshem and today I'm going to show you a program where two balls are rotating around the center of the screen. Let's get started. Before going any further, let's have a look at some basic trigonometry that is going to be required for this example and the next. There is a ball somewhere in the system and I want this ball to rotate around the center of the screen. Therefore I'm going to need two data. A, which is the angle around the center, and D, which is the distance between the center and the center of the ball. The rotation will result in increasing this angle from 0 to 2 pi, or 360 degrees. So, if I got this D and A variables, the X value, so the value on the X axis of the center of the ball, equal cosinus of the angle multiplied by D. Cosinus being a function that's available from the standard ADA API. The value on the y axis is going to be equal to the sinus of the angle A multiplied by the distance d. And just like that, we are going to be able to create some very interesting animations. This program is slightly more complex than the one we've seen so far. And what it's going to do is to create two balls on the screen and have them rotating around the center. Let's see this live. Like this one, for example, where, as you can see, two balls are rotating around the center of the screen. One is rotating in one direction the other one is rotating into the other direction and they seem to have slightly different speeds. So in order to write this program I need access to mathematical functions such as cosinus and sinus. This is a standard ADA library which is called ADA Numerics Elementary Function and as before I'm declaring a dependency between my program and this library using a width and use clauses. So because this is a slightly more complicated problem to model, I've decided here to introduce a composite data structure. This is the equivalent of a struct uh, in C for example. So the data that I need here is the angle the angle speed, the distance to the center, as well as a handle to the shape which will contain the position in X and Y. In order to do that, I am creating a new type in the system which name is ball type and which is defined by a record. And as you can see, within the record it really looks like as if I was declaring variables. But again here, there is no variable that is declared, there is only components of a type, and I will have the possibility to create actual variable of this type later on. What I'm introducing then is a piece of code that is going to be able to manipulate objects of this type. This is a subprogram, a function. And what this function is going to do is to take a ball type object, change its position, and update it on the screen. This very subprogram does not return any value. So, as a matter of fact, in ADA, we call these subprograms not returning values procedures. We'll see the differences between procedures and function later on. So this procedure 
is going to manipulate its parameter, which is an object of type ball type. It is going to update the value, changing the angle, updating x and y. So, in other words, this parameter v here has a value when it comes into the procedure, and then the procedure updates the value. Um, I'm expecting the update to be taken into account at call time on the actual object. This is why here I need to say this object may be updated which is specified by a specific mode of parameter passing in out literally meaning it has a value in and the value may be updated by the subprogram within the procedure i can access to various components of the parameter using the dot notation so for example v dot angle gives me access to the angle component of the V parameter. I'm creating an object of type ball type simply by declaring a variable of its type as I would do for other types such as shape ID or float. Here I'm initializing the object through an ADA construction that's called an aggregate. So the aggregate is a list of values for all the components of the type. As for parameters in subprogram calls, there are two ways of doing that, the positional notation and the name notation. As you can see here, I'm using the name notation, so I am naming each component then on the right part of the arrow providing the value to put to this component. One important point here is that every single component has to be mentioned here. If I'm missing one, the program will not compile. At last, when all the objects are created and I'm within the infinite loop of the program, I'm going to call the iterate procedure I wrote earlier on those two objects. So here, at each iteration, I'm updating the value of B1, and then I'm updating the value of B2. And depending on the actual component's value, I'm going to move the object one way or the other. Let's verify your understanding with a short quiz session. There are a few compilation errors on this piece of code. Click on them and hit Submit. There were four errors to be found here. Let's see them one by one. The first one is a syntax detail that was not stressed too much during the presentation. In order to close a record definition, I need to write end record. So that's a bit different from a subprogram definition where I would write end and then the name of the subprogram as I did here for main and iterate. If you remember from the previous example, we had a parameter and the parameter mode that was specified was in out because this parameter was modified within the subprogram. And this is the case here as well. I'm modifying v dot step and I'm modifying v dot x. Therefore, I should write in out as the mode for this subprogram. As a matter of fact, if I'm not saying anything, the mode is in, which means constant parameter or input. That is to say, a parameter which value cannot change inside the subprogram. This is the good old floating point versus integer mistake. Here, step is declared as being a float, minus 1 and 1 are integer constants. 
so they cannot fit in a component that expects float, I should write minus 1.0 and 1.0 for this program to compile properly. Finally, in B initialization, I am only providing values to shape and step components, while ADA is requiring me to provide a value for every single component on the type. So this is not going to compile. I need to provide values for X and Y as well. By the way, as a bonus question, if you write this program, you will see that the ball is staying at the center of the screen and is not moving. I will leave it to you to fix this error and make the ball move from one end to the other. This concludes this lesson of Edaco University. As you may have noticed, we're starting to see some pretty advanced concepts of the Ada language. So it might be a good time to stop the overview for a while and go to some more detailed courses, in particular the second one on the language basis. In any case, there is going to be additional lessons of this overview, so stay tuned for more.